everybody come on in on the podcast. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Bob. Hey, Sheena. Hey, Stan. Uh, getting right. ready. Got a special guest in the house. You ready? You're all set. Okay. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the City Kitty Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. yo. We got Ronnie Chanel in the house. Say what's up, Ronnie. What up, though? What up? Also, we got a special guest in the house, and all of our listeners know it's the City Kitty Podcast. But when we get a male in the house, it's the hound dog. We got a dog in the house. You know what I'm saying? Uh -uh. So uh, I need to do better than that. <laughs> I need you to do better oh, than that. Oh, you want me to do that? Just do yeah. a little. But I, I ain't said who you was yet. Oh. So our special guest for today's show is none other than Detroit comedian uh, Fago. Do you go by Fago Red or Fago? Fago Red. Yeah. Fago Red. Fago like Red, the pop. Fago. Like the pop. Like the pop. <laughs> like the pop. So um, he's going to be our special guest in the house today. Tell him what's up, Fago. <laughs> what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? You know, uh, chilling out. Okay, hopefully. Uh, Give us the roof, roof. Hur, 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 hur. And hey, where can folks see you around the city? Where you be at? Um, you know, I'm everywhere, man. You can go to my um my Instagram page, uh Seven Mile Fago with a seven. Or uh you can catch me on um Facebook, Dewan Hampton. Okay, they made me um get out of there. So uh Dewan Hampton, D A J U A N Hampton. Um and I'm a lot of my shows know. oh don't be thrown off if you see Dewan Hampton and Fago. They two different people, okay? So Dewan <laughs> may say some real conscious stuff. And Fago, the comedian, may say something different. So don't be alarmed. They the same people. The only difference is Remy, though. <laughs> that's a lot that's of a totally difference. difference. Yeah, that's a big difference. That's a big difference. It, it, it is. What did Biggie say? When the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling ain't what no I fuck when I diss them. I'm a pimp by blood. And that's the and problem. I'm Shun. That's the problem. But y'all can catch me down at the Punchline uh, every Saturday and Sunday. And where's the Punchline at, Fago uh, North, Red? Northwestern Highway, 29555. Northwestern Highway. Uh, Punchline Comedy Lounge. Y'all can Google that. Google that. You know. Okay, well, we're going to do a quick um, wrap-up last week. We did just talk about weight loss and, and uh, the right way and the wrong way. And our synopsis was, what, Ronnie? We don't give a fuck. Ain't that what the synopsis yeah, was? Yeah, it's, it's, it, there's no right way. There's not a wrong way. Your way, whatever works for you. What's beneficial for you, if however you do it, and you still alive, that's all that matters. And that's all that matters. Uh, Stan Banks said, Fago a cool guy. Uh, he's a cool guy. The thumbs up. Take Stan off. Banks is all right, man. He's all he's right. He's all right. Fellow. What's up, Stromile? Thanks for listening. So, look, today we're going to jump into because we uh, got a couple different things we're going to talk about. But our first topic is something that caught, uh, it caught my mind. Lil Wayne's daughter was on, um, I forget what show it was, but she went to go see a therapist. And she broke down in a therapy because she was saying that it was so much that she changed her whole persona from social media um, changed. So they show like a little clip of her going back, arguing with everybody, cussing and fussing with everybody and stuff like that. And so she broke down because she was saying that's not really, she was just saying like, that's not really what she, um, you know, who she really wanted to be and what she, you know, that's not who she really was. And so my question was, because she was saying she had to be so defensive on social media because everybody, you know, her father's a celebrity and mama and all this other kind of stuff. So she was saying so many people were coming at her that she automatically became defensive in her everyday life. So whatever was happening on social media began to spill out into her everyday life. So my question is, does social media change us in, in some type of way? Do you think on, that some people might take the persona that they have on Facebook and let it spill out into their regular life? You know what I'm saying? Like, can some things make, you know, because she basically what she was saying was all that anger built up right. from all this stuff on social media, and then it spilled out to her regular life. Well, so I can say for me, like, not for me per se, but I think with uh, people that's really in that generation, it could cause depression. You know, if you're looking at somebody's lifestyle and you thinking that that's really how they are and you're comparing yourself to what you see in, on social media. And I know a lot of people say, I don't care what other people think, but there's a subconscious in there that people do have that comparison game. You might see somebody 30 with kids and a husband and you at home singing with your mama and you looking like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? You see what I'm saying? So see. what is it? Is, do you think that sometimes uh, social media can spill out into your, you know, into other areas of your life, basically is what I'm saying. So, you know. Well, <clears throat> well I feel, first off, what we got to do, man, we have to be honest with ourselves and just accept the fact that social media is a part of life. is 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 not a subculture anymore. Like you know what right. I'm saying. Like it is reality, so to speak, because you can get fucked up because of social media. It is a grounds for communication, <laughs> exchanging pictures, exchanging images, exchanging perceptions, uh, communicating. Um, people don't pass out invites no more. You know what I mean. They invite over. 
uh, the social media. You know what I mean? Um, you can make a facade, use like like you can create a facade using social media, but then, but then that's the same thing everybody did when they left the house back in the day before social media. You know what I'm saying? Creating a facade. You know what I mean? Um, you know, smiling and shit, faking it with your family in front of people, but then going up in the crib yelling and wilding and your kids is fucking and shit. You know what I'm saying? True. So, but like you said, it's a subculture now. So now, so what I'm saying, it's not so, a subculture. It's embedded right, right, in right. who we are today. Right. So, so basically, what I'm saying is, is it affecting your life outside of it? It's part of your life. It, it is your. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So your life is. So you're going into. So, so it's it's not a point of you're not being. It's not a point of you're not living a point of not being affected by social media. Like you're going into social media being affected already. Now my sister, you know she saying? refuses to get any form of social media. Right. She has no nothing. If she right. you know, if I wanted to see something, I gotta show her off my phone. Ain't no I'ma tag you in it, I'ma none of that. But when she was, like everybody wants to be someone they're not that's why you got the 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 uh, like city girls say, I bet your little sister want to be like me because they're putting it out there and you see it all day and that's what you want to be. Right. And a lot of times it's not really who you are. Right. And like with her, she put her she puts that out there. So she puts first of all, she's a um, uh, not a celebrity, but she is a celebrity. Yeah, as, she, as some, yeah she's some, a celebrity child. Same yeah, she, thing. yeah. But but with that you get haters. Right. You know what I'm saying? You growing up, you're doing everything in front of the camera. Right. So, of course, people are going to come for you, just not even if you did anything wrong, just because you who you are. But you know right. what? Social media can affect your mood. I think it can. I know I done looked on Facebook and seen my homegirls that went somewhere and them bitches ain't tell me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, bitch, y'all going out, y'all tagging each other, y'all keep calling each other sister. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be small shit. You'd be like, oh. And then that's kind of how you find out you off the group. You know what I'm saying? Like, so these bitches calling each other sister now? Yeah, I, 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 ain't I ain't in the group I ain't no more. Call, sis. I ain't been called. And then sis. you got to think about it too. Even without social media, she is still here. The backlash of the people because now because people that do have backlash can like um like exhaust it on a platform. So the journalists don't have to take that um um negative stance toward her because it's already being took. Like they can afford to just say positive shit. But back in the day when it wasn't like that, you you had journalists that. Uh, specifically took the, you know what I mean, the antagonist route because right. like the uh, Harados, uh, like yeah, the <laughs> yeah, because that view wasn't there. You know what I mean? Like look at all them, like uh, Star and Buck. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they had to exist back then because it wasn't no outlet for anti and uh, not you only know. antagonistic behavior. Yeah, not not know. only, I delete, I delete anybody, and that this is just not from Facebook. I changed my number a year ago. Because I had people, certain people in my lives that would call me with drama, with bullshit, with their depressing story. And here it is. You're taking on their energy. Even, it's not even your situation. But if that's what you're getting fed all the time, then you become what they are. Mm -hmm. And you carry their burdens. And I look on Facebook a lot of times. I've deleted the complainers. I've deleted the guys right. that, that bash women. Right. I deleted, you know, those negative People every you know day. I deleted, right. I deleted the one uppers. Happy. I deleted the one uppers. I deleted. The, I, I start unfollowing. Delete the one uppers. Every time you go on there, like you be like, oh, okay, something good happened to me. Something good or happened to me. You be Gooder. like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't right. stand the one uppers. Right. You, know what you be like, I just came back from, from France. Aruba. They're like, they're like bitch, Aruba. I've been to the moon, bitch. You know right. what I'm saying? I went to Aruba, <laughs> but I was in the rainforest. So I it's was just in the like, rainforest. So it's just like that's why I got I'm saying. ate by a crocodile. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like. Bet you you didn't get ate by a crocodile uh -huh. when you went to the rainforest. So that's what I'm saying. I, I believe that um, what she was saying is that because we do have so much social media and it is a part of us, I think that started a lot of people playing the comparison game because you seeing all you seeing everything. You know, but you're but you're weak. I don't think it's. Weak. I, I'm 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 so strong. I'm so strong. It ain't it ain't it ain't nothing that nobody else is doing. It ain't nothing that nobody else got. When I, I I'm so strong in my mind that. When I see these images and things, it doesn't make me say, "I want to be like them." I want. I just want to be like Ronnie. Ronnie probably did. But 10%. you know what? Now, Ronnie's now, now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be try to be, you, you know, like fair for the little girl or whatever. Even though I know she ain't no little girl. Which, I'm just saying in general. But at the same time, though, um, she's always been rich. Always has some kind of status amongst because her dad was that guy. 
probably the people around her probably don't talk no shit. You know what I'm saying? How old is she? Like 18. I'm no, not, she's older than that. She's, she's older than like 10 or 20. She's about 20 or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you, you, I, well, I, and I'm I don't know. In my from 20s, the, though, I, I figure it out. Like, I don't know. Yeah, you that's right. Why I, I, 20s, I go so like, hard. Fuck that shit. I go so hard on my daughters. But then that's my probably 14 year old. But, but then that's probably because you've been through that shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, like was it a rough you, time for you when you was younger that you had to overcome as no, far as? No. Okay, like, so I'm I had be, to overcome and to me, some I'm going to be honest. So like, became, my, my 14 year, my, my teenage self, into my 20 year old self, to my 30 year old self, my, the comp, everything is a little different. Because I had, right. like, stuff that I would have told my 30 year old self to tell my 20 year old self, stop tripping. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's some stuff that I know, especially with being a part of social gotta, media. Right. Now, we could, we were lucky. Like, if we got dumped, or we got fucked over by or something that happened. That's on a low low. It's on a low low. <laughs> now you know now I'm you're putting your dirty drawers. Nah, literally. <laughs> and what Take I'm a picture is... of your dirty drawers and post them. I'm talking about, I done broke up hey, with this you, bitch, Sierra hey, Nancy you know panties. Hey, but you know that Let me be... get in the call okay. in number real quick. Uh, 248. If you guys want to call in oh, call and in. chime in on what's going on, because really, we're, all we're asking people right now, uh, outside of Ronnie being, you know, strong, like, you know, outside of uh, uh, I don't Mr. play T that, over though. here. I don't play that. Like, my girls, I don't play that. Um. But I'm saying it was a point in time, and maybe you've always been like that, but it was a point in time that most of us had some type of insecurities or something like that that we had to overcome. And if I had to do, if I had to deal with social media in, in them times that I was dealing with the things I was dealing with, it kind of could have been fucked up. Hey, you know because, what I'm I, because, hey, because that's crazy because you got people from other cities saying you weak as fuck, and you like, damn, my weakness transcends you states. Know, states. <laughs> you telling me like I'm, I'm, a weak bum? As... I'm a bum in Australia? Right, like, like I'm weak as fuck in Pittsburgh? My daughter, Pittsburgh. my daughter's getting into some shit, <laughs> and I'd be like, what the fuck you say it for? Right. It, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter what somebody else think about you. Right. And I, I, I had to, I, I, I preach that to them. I had to get mentally strong. I preach though. that. Right. But you, you have to I mean? um you have to preach it to them. The number for yeah. they can call in. Oh, the call in number is 248-809-5004. Again, the call in number is 248-809-5004. I don't play that, but see that's why these kids they soft. That's why, you know what I'm saying? They committing suicide because I don't think they soft. They, they no, nah, nah, I think they got a different set of issues. I think they got a different set of Cause issues. Because they soft. What, what are they, their issues that weren't ours? I we, mean, because we, one, we came from the 80s. But one Because when we got our asses kicked by the bike rack, it was over. <laughs> we got our, we well, went home, well, and then you went back the next day, and everybody's playing ball. Now, yeah. how about this? Now, you, you get, get your, your ass kicked by the bike rack. It's on video. It's, it's on Facebook. It's on Snapchat. Yeah, and it follows it. you, and it's yeah. everywhere. And, and then you come back the next morning, it's right. still going on. And yeah. you can't get out of that. Yeah. And now, again, you Even got if it people, don't go viral, you got to realize yeah, it's you, going viral in that school. And then the things that people <laughs> Everybody's can do on that with technology now, we ain't never been no mean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Feather said that's why she don't do. Yeah, you're right. Feather, I didn't think uh, about that. Feather, uh, Graham said that's why she don't do. Feather so, Graham? Yeah. Oh, that's my girl. Yeah, I that's... went to high school with her. You, you went there before? Yeah. 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 Feather Feather was part of the clique. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's Feather that's Fago. You know Fago. Dewine. Dewine. You know Dewine. Dewine <laughs> so that that's kind of the thing with social media. But like we said, it is so many things going out here in the world. One other thing that I picked up uh, on social media. Oh, I was hold on. on before it. you go there. Before you go there, let me stop. I had a very, very good question. Uh, came from uh, Ronnie Hardy. He says, how did you all pick the name City Kitties? Let I me like tell that. you. I like it that. took me, hold on, this was my brainchild. Like this was that. my baby for the last seven months. I went through about a bunch of, I went. I want to say about six other comedians. I couldn't figure it out. I came up with the name, uh, uh, a thousand names, two, because it was initially two to three girls. I didn't know who they were going to be. It was two, uh, two city girls, uh, Two queens, and I was like, I don't, don't like that sound. And I, I said, Detroit City Kitties. But I didn't want to limit us to just Detroit. Detroit. Right, so right. I wanted people from all over. City Kitties. And then it hit me. Much. And it hit me. I woke up. I was like, it's a city. City Kitties. I fought. Me and another I like uh, me and another comedian, we were going bouncing for, back and forth, bouncing these names around. And it just stuck. Dog, you need to tra Ain't that trade. Dope? You need to trademark the fuck out of this and um, make some shirt. Ain't that dope? Got, don't say our shit on the air. We yeah. already got this under I mean, people no, thinking saying, about I mean, that shit. I mean, we already shit, got like, this. We got this. this. We got this. A nigga been to took your business in five minutes. No, they won't because I'm the legal mind. I'm the legal mind. Are you the legal mind? I'm the legal mind. Yeah. So I'm the legal mind. I'm the legal mind. But that was a great question, Ronnie. Thank you. So um, something else that's been going on in the world. I don't know if anybody has been paying attention. So ASAP Rocky. 
ASAP, ASAP. ASAP has not, if anybody, let me just catch y'all up uh, out here. ASAP was detained in Sweden about maybe three weeks ago, mm -hmm. so about a month ago. Um, but before all that happened, he came out with a very problematic a statement, basically saying that he didn't sign up to be no role model. He didn't sign up for none of this shit. Um, Black Lives Matter don't have nothing to do with him, basically, because he rich. That ain't his thing. It ain't really got nothing to do with him. Uh, after that, he was detained, and everybody like free ASAP, blah, blah, blah. Everybody ain't say no free I ASAP. I mean, I seen a couple people talking about free <laughs> ASAP, or they were talking about... Uh, like T.I. came out and was saying something well, like... T.I. got um, to. T.I. got to. No, he so. don't. T.I. No, came out and said something basically like, you know, that's inhumane and blah, 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 blah. So once ASAP got out, everybody thought that maybe he would learn, you know, that learn his lesson, but he did not. So after he was detained and got out, he basically said that his being detained in Sweden had nothing to do with his race. Um, oh, he's out? Yeah, well, basically he said his detainment has nothing to do with his race. I don't think... I think he did get out. Um... But basically, he's saying his detainment had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this race in a country that's Swedish, that is in Norway, Greenway, uh, Iceland, Norwegian, blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, very, very. So I don't Why understand. Why was he being detained? Because basically, what did they say? Oh, it was an altercation. Um, nobody actually saw him in the altercation, but it was an altercation, and they automatically detained him. Um, because it has nothing to do with his race. So my thing is, when was uh, the last time ASAP Rocky was relevant? Uh, they fuck with ASAP. Yeah, they fuck with ASAP. When? What did you make? I think he's a model. I was gonna say he's a model. He's a model now. Okay. I don't. He's like I don't a brand know. ambassador for yeah. stuff. I don't know. Um, Keep him there. And I was gonna say probably fuck him outside of <laughs> in, in that whole. Fur, he's probably one of the most popular ones. Like people know Fur because Fur is a good rapper. Right. Rocky is probably the the like the one that people know. So the he's most still about. working. Is so he yeah, still making working. music? Yeah, he was doing a tour. He was over there to do a whole tour. So I'm gonna say. Um, so let me pose oh, my question. Okay. So the question, uh, was he wrong? And do you think that celebrities have an obligation? That when they have What's, a platform, do they have an obligation to use that platform? I feel as I feel as um as a uh, black entertainer, you have a moral obligation to some degree. To some degree. You know, like if the question comes up, you know what I'm saying? You may not be the one that wants to actually like initiate the uh you know, the questions or the responses or anything like that, but at least be prepared to some degree because you do have a platform. You know, like, um, I also work for Chrysler, right, which is a car company or whatever, um, and I work for the truck plant. Okay, if a war break out and they need to build tanks, that facility breaks down and is ready to build tanks. Really? And that's f the government. That's not no Chrysler shit. Like you know what I'm saying? It's 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 a obligation. That's an American obligation, I guess. The factories have mm -hmm. for the hmm. you you do know what I'm saying? So I feel black people or minorities or whoever is going through some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you might not ha even be a minority. You know what I'm saying? You can just be an entertainer, period. Because you make music for the people, so music is the voice of the people so, so you have you just to have can't some manage kinda, your business like i mean you can but if the question comes up don't disrespect the movement by disregarding the movement a, a simple, you know what i'm saying but would you would you would you think would you say it was okay if he just he didn't say it doesn't matter to me i don't care about it if he just said you know cuz he went hard he I, said i'm rich i'm in i'm in if, beverly hills and he, all this right, shit right right like, that was the problem he, like he denounced did that. it but is it okay just to say i'd rather not speak on that subject that's fine. Yeah. Show some respect to to some degree. Like they say, a fool. Do, you be like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. like and then and, and then we'll walk away with just saying, oh, they not in tune to what's going on. We won't hate you. It'll be like, oh, right. that person just ain't in tune to what's going on. But to open you know your, what I'm saying. But open your because that happens mouth a lot. And be disrespectful about right. it. And just say, right. I don't care about these people. Right. This that and third. You'd have right. been better That's off just totally saying, you know, I, I choose not to, you know, and discuss think, this situation. And I think a lot of me right now with some of the culture is, uh, a lot of the rap culture is, and that's why I like the, the Jay-Z's and the Nipsey's and the Meek Mill's, because one thing I like about Meek Mill is Meek Mill, they understand. They Here's the thing. They're not perfect people, but what they're doing is trying to right the wrongs of the stuff that you did in the hood. You feel me? So everybody know what Jay-Z did in the neighborhood. 
but I can't change what I did in the neighborhood, but I can put some money back into what I did to this neighborhood. You understand what I'm saying? Is, is he doing that? Is yeah, Jay-Z first of all, that? one he doing a whole lot around Brooklyn. Secondly, he got the whole Rock Nation legal team. So when that little boy got in trouble down in uh forget what state it was, and he it was the national anthem, he didn't stand for it, and they pulled him out that classroom and tried to arrest him and put charges on him. He sent the Rock Nation team, sent this legal team down there. When them people in I think Arizona um pulled the guns out because the baby walked out the Dollar Tree with a, a dollar Barbie doll. And mm-hmm. they had the guns and all that stuff out on them. He sent his legal team down there. So I'm saying, put oh, your money. So we got a Rock Nation superhero. He got a, yeah, quick. he got he put. But <laughs> and also, my thing is on what you had, cause like Meek Mills, Meek Mills understand now he's trying to. So if he knew he did the whole drug game and all that stuff, at least let me get out here and try to push prison reform. Because if if I know that these people might go, you know what I'm saying. So it's like the music that you creating. And this plat- and you know who you're talking to, then you got to have some type of responsibility for this, too. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I like him, because it's like he's talking about prison reform, and he's putting his money where his mouth is. He also is part ownership of Lids. We all walk around with the fitties and the, the Lids. Who is? Meek Mills. He just bought half of Lids. Okay. So You know what I'm saying? So my point being is, if, you, if we good enough for you to make money off of us and everything like that, either shut your mouth or... Or just don't disrespect. Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes you can talk too much. Sometimes it's better just to refrain, refrain from saying anything, than just say some uneducated shit or you know something you really don't know about. Right now, and I'm, and I'm gonna give you a prime example. Cardi B. Cardi B is a prime example. Cardi B said, "I don't want to be no role model," which means I'm not finna change my music. So you better raise your daughters because I'm not finna change my music. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Millie Jackson. But she also has a voice when it comes to issues in the community. You see what I'm saying? So you can be, and that's what I'm saying, so you can be the artist you want to be and be like, listen, I ain't telling y'all, you can listen to my music, but I ain't finna tell y'all blah, 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 blah. Right. But you got to take a stance for something. So my thing is when he said that, to me it was bigger than that because now you got other people who follow you now they took the, you know what, ASAP said it, so I don't give it either. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was more of a, a bigger. He denounced it. Yeah. You know. And he, so. Like, he d- took a stance against it, actually. Yeah, he did. Now, do you think he was <laughs> foolish for saying that his uh, detainment had nothing to do with race? And, no, he trying to clear. And then 99%. That's how, that's how arrogant he is. That's how arrogant he is. He's trying to clear his. Uh, I mean, he's definitely trying to. He don't want to look stupid. He done read the memes. People done told him what had happened. He done ate the words. You know what I mean? He's trying to. Soften it up or whatever, you know, like even if it didn't pertain to race, he don't know if it pertained to race or not. You know what I'm saying? We, come on now. I mean, I'm just saying, I didn't see the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it didn't, but I'm saying he don't know enough to just jump and out. You know, and if you're in, you in a Swedish country and you're the only black person that get arrested, what the hell you think? The, From uh, an offer and it's 20 guys, other- The other two guys didn't get arrested either. Right. And you're the only one with a visible face, a visible name, and you're visible. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that that's that's my point. But I don't know. I'm gonna officially go out and say fuck ASAP. I don't care. That's what I. Yeah, that's that, how I feel. Yeah, that, yeah. That was. Uh, you get the finger. I can't fuck. Yeah. With I, I cause that that just uh that, cause that just gave me the red ass. Look, bill collectors, you can't be calling during my podcast. Okay, yeah. I ain't got it then. No, they and s- I ain't having now. They see you. They, they see they, me they, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bill collectors are so disrespectful. Like they, they call from these different three one three numbers and they call them from local numbers. Like I like I'm an answer. A couple times I an answer. You know what I'm saying? Like hello. Thinking I'm about to get a hey big head, and it's all like all right. Melanie. I'm all like, damn. Y'all ever had a bill collector call? You thought it was somebody like calling you because they cared about you? Oh yeah. And it was <laughs> you thought it was oh, a regular yeah. number. Got mm-hmm. tricked a few times. <laughs> they get me. I I'm like they're like hello. May I speak with Sharon? I'm like ah, my name's Sharon. Ah, yeah. I got you. Got uh, you. No, they ain't even me. <laughs> I ain't got no money. Cause right. they be like like Melanie, and I be like hey, and they be like yeah, this is a credit acceptance. I be like damn. You know, credit acceptance is so and hood. And you know what's so crazy? <laughs> My so boy hood. worked for credit acceptance. They so hood. And they uh, came into the office on his ass and, and called him to the office and was like, look, we'll give you a discount, but if you don't pay this shit, you can't work here no more. Uh, <laughs> so you mean tell me you he working for a it. company and you couldn't yeah. even pay your... That, that should speak testament Hell, to that company. Hey, listen. That should just speak listen, volumes. Listen, there's a lot of people that work for Chrysler that can't afford what they build. Oh, that's for real. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's for real. It's we got $70,000 trucks come down that Yeah, uh, a lot of people that work... The same product they build, you, they can't afford to buy. Hell yeah, that's that's often. But I would feel 
better knowing that at least Chrysler has a range of something I can get. And then credit, credit acceptance. acceptance is giving you a 1996 Sebring for fifty thousand dollars. You feel me? You know, cre- <laughs> no, no, no. You know, credit acceptance though. They also uh, take accounts from other people and collect their debt. I know. Oh, okay. They are a, a, a very aggressive debt collector. That's why I gave yeah. them the car back. Anyway, be- because of <laughs> people being there fighting for their life to keep them jobs, yeah. they don't be getting paid shit. So that's why they be calling me, and I just be like, hey. just enough to start, just enough to buy something to start up buying something, that's, but not enough to keep the payments listen, going. Some days, it. some days when I'm just in a not having a good day, I pray a bill collector calls me so I can just fuck that day up the way they think they' about to fuck mine up. They get on the phone, I just be like, they said, do you have, you know, do you have anything? Nah. When when you gonna get it? Never. Most of the ones. But I, I let approved. them know. I say, okay, let them know. Tell them I'm never paying them. You know, you can call back if you want to. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. I just hate the ones <laughs> that try to uh try to talk down on you. Like, and I be like, I ain't got it. And I had one like, so he was like, so you ain't had it in three years. Like, really, really? <laughs> I was like, no, I I haven't had it in uh three years. Um, uh, well, on our City Kitty podcast, as you know, we talk about a lot of different issues and a lot of different things. Um. And we're going to talk about a couple of things before we get to Kitty Litter. We're going to kind of go by real quick. I oh, cannot. That's, oh, that's sweet. Kitty, kitty Litter. litter. <laughs> I know. I cannot <laughs> that's be. That's the be, gossip. That's the gossip. I would be repressed. <laughs> and I would be. Uh, that's dope as fuck. As we were talking about everything, I would be uh, unpatriotic if I did not give a shout out to the Super Squad. And if y'all don't know what the Super All Squad the is. If you don't know what the Super Squad is, and these are our uh, representatives, so these are our government city kitties. That's what I want to call them, our government city kitties. Uh, Representative AOC out of New York, Representative Omar out of Minnesota, Representative Presley out of Massachusetts, and our own Rashida Tlaib out of Michigan. Let's give it up for the squad, baby. Give her round, round, round. I'm still horse round, round. And if you do not know that who the squad, that can't eat cigarette butts. Don't they? That can't eat Newports. <laughs> and drink whiskey. <laughs> and drink whiskey. <laughs> That's all alley cat. That's all nasty yeah. alley cat. That's a, a alley cat. Real. <laughs> um, and that so real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through because this is our our because uh, you know this is our serious section. I don't know if Carl's serious, but this is the informative part of the show where I like to inform people. That's my part. Um. So these four ladies, if you don't know who they were, they were four uh, representatives who were attacked or called out by uh, President Trump. And now he was saying they are anti-American and all this other rhetoric about these four women. Um, And what I want to say was what I've noticed is that we are coming into a time that basically if you don't agree with the majority, um, then... They're calling you unpatriotic or you're hateful. Telling you go back this. to your own country. You know, telling you go back to your own country. So basically, um, and I mean, it erupted. You know, um, you had the, if you, anybody would have seen the house, they went crazy. Basically, they said that you the, you cannot say that the president is racist. That's what they said. And that's bullshit. His that? whole campaign. They they said literally. They the said, punishment for actually being racist. Yeah, but which, you cannot which let's say all it. agree yeah, that, he, that he, he is. But they said you cannot Say but you can't it. say it because it uh, it goes against the yeah. uh, house decorum. The house decorum. So yeah. you, on For the real? house floor, you can on the house floor you yeah. cannot say that the president is. So racist. I got a question. What you're telling me is that someone, one of these young ladies, said he's a racist on the house floor, and that's the whole uproar. No, the uproar is because he told them that they need to go back to where they came Which, from. Which and you you know their humor um, of that, right? So three of them are born, born in here, America. Except for one. The fourth one, who's a naturalized citizen. Has been a naturalized citizen longer than his wife. Yeah. Right. So basically, you're talking out of ignorance because they're four women of color. Um, and uh, basically, everybody kind of just joined together and ripped his head off. You still have about eight uh, representatives, eight white women, who say that, that he is not racist and he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. And they do need to go back to where they came from. So I just wanted to say. Hold on, Dave got something but, to say. Well, I can see don't, him. Don't, don't forget, um, you have Representative Mike Kelly. Uh, from the uh, from the state of Pennsylvania, uh, who uh, for what it's worth, that's that's his picture. Okay. So that's who he is. Uh, who would like everybody to know, uh, white is a color, and so therefore he is a person of color. Uh, oh, okay. he did say that. Get right. all the fucks out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all of them. <laughs> and actually, and actually, too, I don't know if y'all also know, uh, his wife and his thirteen year old son are both Russian spies. I can believe that. That's why they is they don't kick it with them. I can believe because that. They and, their own um, business. I can believe that. And uh, that's not even a son. That's a little man. <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> 
<laughs> and what's the other guy whose wife is the secretary of translation? She's uh, is she Japanese or Chinese yeah. or and something like that. And they asked him what he said. And he was like, uh, with a, uh, 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 well, you know, she does a good job. It was like, uh, he, you know, because you really didn't have anything to say. So I just wanted to shout them out because when they gave, when four of them individually gave their speeches, they were awesome. They spelled very eloquently, very straight to fact to the point. Um, and I just want to say I was very proud to see four women of color from different nationalities come together and just tear their head off. Like I'm and, still and mad tear their head off. Me. I'm not I sound like an cat. You so stupid. <laughs> that drink whiskey. Right. That drink whiskey. Eat cigarette butts. Eat cigarette butts. That so might that be was, that might be pregnant. We don't know. <laughs> so that On was the shout out that I I wanted to give to the uh to the four women before we started. Um and before we start uh kitty litter couple things I just want to talk about real quick. Um, after we said that, did y'all know, and I don't know if y'all read, but did y'all know, y'all know who Megger Evers is, right? Yeah. Slain, yeah. Silver, right there. Do you know his brother is a Trump supporter? That's because he broke. See, like, dude, see, what Trump, do you know? I think Megger Evers is turning over in his grave. Trump think he's slick. No, Megger Evers knew, knew who his brother, brother was. was that's, why he went out, he, that's why he was like, man, I'm out this mouth. Like, that's why he was going so hard. <laughs> it was, cause, but how do you go from being a uh, the first elected black mayor in uh, uh, Fayette, Mississippi. Who, how do you Charles go? Ever, ever? Yeah. How do you go from being in the NAACP as a, a forefront in the NAACP, the civil rights movement, and it was one other thing he was in to turn around for a circle. Can I explain it? Do you believe Can some people it? just do things for uh, attention? Right. right. They just do things think about for it. attention. Because think about it. Think about it. Mecca Evers is his brother. He dies. He benefiting like a motherfucker. He like, hey, hey. He, he won he, that election yeah. off his name. Yeah. Off his brother's death. You go to NAACP, he, he, he it, 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 it's like it's Michael Jackson kids. Blanket. Like, hey, I'm Michael Jackson uh, supposed to be son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <to> Blanket <laughs> like, is his son. Man, come on. Ain't none of them his kids. Them kids <laughs> man, was white as hell. Them, them kids, was, kids look like. Them kids uh, was whiter than white. Them kids had Ricky no Stroder black and jeans they, in their body. Them kids look like Ricky Stroder in this bitch. You know what? <laughs> Ricky Michael, I ain't mean it, Michael. MJ, don't. No, man. Don't and, then, and then Trump think he's slick. He probably uh, went and sought after him. Yeah. And, and was like, Some you know, people just like attention and controversy. And we're talking about him. When would we ever talk about Megger right. Evers? Megger knew how Chuck ass was. It ain't Chuck. You gave him a nickname. <laughs> but you know what? It's so weird to see. <laughs> but it's so weird to see people Mecca who are so unapologetically black and then be like, I support Trump. Like, uh, like what's yeah. you call it? Uh, Jimmy Walker. He will not. He hates for you to call him JJ oh, from Good sure. Times. He hates it for was, you to call bad. him JJ. If you call him, uh, he hates everything that has yeah. to do with Good Times. All of Man, that. That's, that's what because they on. clowned him. Like all of that. Because he got called a buffoon for doing that shit. But if that's you, why the daddy but, but, left but, the but show. But if you go back, if you go back and watch those, I wouldn't really. I mean, I know that's how he Thank was you. made and how we know him and everything. But that ain't something that today. I wouldn't be associated with a show like that. Right. That show was you straight You jumping up coonish. talking about, that oh my. That show was, He's oh my always God. always pulled hey, I don't think I don't think. It was, was horrible. I don't think Good Times was coonish. It, it, oh, it was, it was, was cool. very no, back, coonish. No, you don't back have then, no, no, no. I, no, no, I like, talked I, to my. Uh, I don't think it was coonish. I, I talked to my was, OGs. Yeah, they said, uh, uh, look, because they said JJ was coonish. They said that's why the daddy left. They say the daddy left because he couldn't take that shit no more. He like 30 something, 33 years old playing the 18 year old. It, it, it was, when you, when you look at it. like, James, why are you going to leave? How long are you going to keep playing a hard black man who can't find a job? You know what I'm right, saying? Right, exactly. Like, yeah, because and it was that's what I don't understand. Okay, that, so was that was foolish. <laughs> that, right. that was so, every stereotype of black people was all in that show. He couldn't keep a job. He would get a job. I got it. It was like and Black Gilligan's fired. Island of the project. We, we ain't got no food. All we got is oatmeal. <laughs> all they got but, is oatmeal. But, but, I ain't but, never seen all of that, that motherfucker. All of that. But Thelma <laughs> always got money for a new dress to go out on a date. To go Just on a the, date. Every, it, it was, it was the, when you go back and look at that, it was the worst. But and every me, time they ate dinner, uh, she, she'd be like, this is all we got. But it'd you be know what? So I, think, I, think it was, I think a lot of shows back then kind of play onto the the black with black people it's a range of black people because you did have some in the projects right. and they did live like that okay just but like guess you what? have some who then you but then we still had different imagery because you had good times but you still got the Jeffersons 
So, shit, they moved on up to the east side. You still had the Jeffersons right. on this side. You know what I'm saying? Do, do you so see, to me, how often do you see, how often do you see, and you go back then, you look at it, how often did you see shows with poor white people? Because it was poor. It was, no, 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 no. no, 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 no they weren't poor. They weren't poor. Or who was the other one? But, that's, just, that, but that's, that's TV now. But Okay, but look what I'm saying. But look what I'm saying. You didn't see them portrayed. And that light. Beverly and, Hillbillies and, got and it, money. And it was white, <laughs> it was white people. Uh, so looking at a parallel from that same time slot, because I grew up in those days, uh, <laughs> you've got uh, One Day at a Time, the original. Mm-mm. I have no clue. What's that uh, so that was the mom living with two daughters after her husband bailed out on her. Uh, and they just uh, they just remade it. It's on. I think it's on like Netflix or something like that. They okay. just they just redid it. Um, but it was you know, and they uh, you know, she was always kind of flirting with the uh, the building, the apartment maintenance man yes. to get shit done because she couldn't afford to pay to stick how stuff many, done. And it was how like, many? And they tackle a lot of issues in good times. Like they did. Have, they they did a have a lot of issues. issues. They, you know what I'm saying? They tackle a lot of ish, wow. social issues at that. But time. at the end of the day, they were still broke. Poor black people with nothing. Then that means Sanford and that was, was coonish. Then you might as well call Sanford. Guess what? And that's why he stopped. But you might that's why Sanford he stopped. I had to deal with Archie Bunker. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're not all sitting around like him. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's exactly. But 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 if I it, I, but, I wouldn't do it. Ge- I wouldn't do it. Look today. at the Genesis. You I wouldn't at, do it. So I mean, but I mean, we've evolved in a way where we didn't have to. Sometimes it was things that people did because that's the role that they, it was. That show depicted. It was the roles. It was the role I, that it th- was. Th- that's why the Cosby's were such a success because most shows before them absolutely depicted that. black people. But but again, you stop. And but I think. Poor, but I think the thing that kind of heightened, like because. A lot of people that's like my dad and them age or whatever, when they talk about good times, like some talk Darnell about good times. Darnell said Married like with Children, Roseanne. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. No, but that came. No, no, no. That wasn't those shows then. Came that after, wasn't then. Those shows right, came, no, those shows came I after. I mean, I understand uh, what you're saying, but here's the that thing. That was the hit, the direct again, contrast of the Cosby show. But what though. I'm they saying was just riding is, a different again, way what we're talking about way. in a time frame. But hold on, though. Let me say. The, 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 the thing that they most was tripping about was J.J.'s character. That's what kind of like pushed it out a little bit. And then it had you looking at the other shit like that. But a lot of them talk about JJ's character. I can't really say because I was young. To but me, ain't JJ I love the same the shit reason why people, show. Why, why, why people you know. tuned in? Because JJ was the right. character. And, right. and it, the it daddy stopped ways. doing it because JJ was getting more money than everybody else. Uh. That's the problem. He They can talk that cool shit because James and them did a whole lot of other. And, and Esther Rowe, the same thing. Esther was getting the same. James, that boy was getting more money than everybody else. If that's the thing, Esther always play a black. Mama, that's just like oh, because she did it in Rosewood. Why they left? Why they left? And, and and all that but don't like, stop the show from being what it was and the way it depicted black people. But I'm saying, I'm sorry, but I'm saying you had two different spectrums. You had good times on this end, and it is a facet of people who live like that. All Diana Ross and it was in the Brewsters, so it was a whole culture of people that lived in the ghetto. When you and show I'm me like, a white family. At that time, that was in the project. But you know, Hollywood with wasn't nothing. doing that. Exactly. Wasn't doing that, that. My point exactly. I mean, I get what you're saying, but you're saying I because don't. Because it was be, be, because media has such an influence on people. I see what she's saying. Like, if, if if you keep showing good times and you keep watching good times, that'll have you. Thank that, you, that, 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 that could have you settling for your situation. You know what I'm saying? Whereas other shows could be uplifting. It's like, okay, I can see myself there. And then here's the other thing. Why is it that we go so hard on good time, but we don't talk about the Jeffersons. Like, why don't we just big up the Jeffersons? Everybody, like, don't nobody big up the Jeffersons, but will you see more episodes being played of what? Good, good times. times. Exactly. And, and, and why is it being played? Because they want to well, see no, them no, shucking no. and jiving and cooning. Played? You they jive only, turkey. They but only I like play, good times, but they though. only good play. Good times funny That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they, well, thank you. At you the watch, end of the day, watch it. they only you are going to play what people are going to Because I'm going to be honest. I didn't know good times was... Looked at like that until I started talking to like my friends' parents and stuff like that, listen, and hearing them talking. Listen, I'm like, damn, one y'all day, thought y'all thought that, but then it was half and half because some did, some did. One day you know, I sat I said. and I watched Good Times. This was a few years ago. I sat and I watched Good Times all day. It was on back to back to back. That a marathon. Was depressing than I was like, like, you mean to tell me right. that they didn't have? Yeah. They couldn't come up with the twenty six dollars for the rent, right? They couldn't. Nah, you mean you mean to tell over. me? You mean you mean to tell me that every job James got fired him by the end of the day? 
every job. This is my question. If it's so coonish and it was so horrible, I'm with I'm with Darnell. It's also the highest rated show out of all them shows too. And, and it's guess also what? the one with and the and and, and guess what? It wasn't all black people watching it. I, that, that, I'm just saying. But that's my point. And that's my point. That was the perception. But I'm they just, wanted to see you look like a jab turkey and, and, and shucking and jabbing on the TV. And that's probably why they ain't get a Jefferson's no play. And we don't get a damn Jefferson's no play. We still be who like, don't get a Jefferson's no play? Everybody. Bounce. bounce. I don't see <laughs> He ain't <laughs> bounce. They probably can't get the Jefferson's. They ain't on there. Yeah. I don't see well, Amen I, either. Jeff- amen was the shit. Sherman Hensley probably, you probably can't. They, amen his was estate the shit. probably on that bullshit. Yeah, but. but oh, it's it, still on TV land. What? Uh, amen? Amen. Uh, so, so okay, TV Stan, land probably Stan, got though. Stan, Stan said, Jeff. Stan, good, good. Stan said, y'all say about good times, but uh, it, that was a daddy that never left the house either. So you got something. He he was there though. <laughs> uh, he, was there. <laughs> he was there. He didn't leave though. That's one thing I can't that, okay, say. That was, the one time unit. he left, he died. Yeah, yeah. the one time he left. Yeah, sorry, it was still a family unit. On, <laughs> on the pipeline, he went to hey, the Alaskan pipeline. The best way because I can't even really. It will have to be of them times. If we wasn't in the projects. I'm going to tell you, I ain't saying that my parents was like poor nothing like that, but if you take them out of the projects and put them in a regular house, that's going to be everybody's fucking family, period. Every, once, sometimes they was doing I good. Know, because in Detroit, sometimes I don't they know, was doing my, bad. My people. Sometimes they was never the doing though. good. Sometimes my, they was there. They, they, was, the they was never doing good. When she was on Vita Bright, they was doing all right. They when won the, the lottery. Bright. They won the lottery. They had got Vita robbed. Bright. They, like, like, look, they, they had, never caught the, a break. Bookman book was always on their head for the rent. They yes. had Vita Bright. <laughs> Every uh, week he was on their head. Then when, uh, when uh, what's his name? And they didn't get assistance. Now, what I couldn't understand, what I couldn't understand was this. This is the funny part that I couldn't understand. Um, your thing playing back. What I couldn't understand was why is it that after Thelma married a football player, or after she married, he getting injured because the because they was fucking bad luck. And, and then <laughs> uh, JJ was working at the advertising firm, <laughs> and he still was in the projects. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> she was married, and guess what? He was a football star until he got but, with Thelma, but, and they bad luck asses. Yeah, you know what? I will I will give you that there. Um, so listen, Darnell, when JJ was working on the chicken shack, all this, you know what I'm saying? You know what? When he was, when he was at the chicken shack, they was getting mad chicken. Michael was was just, you know what I'm saying? It was right there. And they was still couldn't come up with the $26 for rent. Keith's leg got broke. But listen, I'm going to tell you when they was doing all right. When James did leave and die, they was on, they was doing all right. Sweet Daddy had the bag, didn't he? That's what I'm saying. It was so many characters. Sweet Daddy. My name is Lenny. I got plenty. Wanda. Wanda crying at every funeral. Uh, Fishbone. Fishbone. We love you. I don't give a damn what it nobody saying. It was cool or not. It was and entertaining, lucky, but it still, it still depicted black people. But, you know, it was also and written it, by a white guy, though. <laughs> it was also written by the white guy. Well, you guy, don't so, say. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of shows was written like, well, so you not got, like. So you got the outside looking in, and probably to a guy like that, that on the outside perception. looking in, he probably looking like black people going through a bunch of shit. Let me and see. Always losing their job, like you know what I'm saying. So, but speaking of white men writing show, Kelsey Grammer was also the executive producer of Girlfriends, though. Yeah, but he was fucking black bitches. You know what I'm saying. So you know, <laughs> but my point is that my point is, so could the man from uh, so could the white man from Good Times. That's though, how he knew about the ghetto. Like, okay, wait but, a minute. But that's what I'm saying though. But it's always the outside looking in though. So that's what I'm pointing. So what I'm saying is it probably the intentions probably wasn't. There. You know, racist. The tensions probably wasn't. You know, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. The tensions okay. probably wasn't racist. Well, it was devil. probably like you know, black people going through some shit. Well, get on. And devil. then black people was probably like, hey, you ain't the only motherfuckers out here, especially in Detroit, because you know you got factories and stuff. Well, get on, you devil. Know. Get on, devil. Um. So listen, now we are at the portion of the show because we got to wrap up. We only got about nine minutes left. I've got um, the kitty litter. What's up, Jay? This is the kitty dirty, litter. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Let you know what's so, going on. What's going on, Ronnie? So look. Nicole Murphy was caught on camera in Italy kissing Layla Rashad's husband. Oh, shit. They've been married since uh, 99. Layla Rashad. Layla Rashad, um, Sunshine from I thought so. Harlem Nights, yeah. Damn. They've been married. They've been married Darnell for... Darnell's taking this serious. Darnell said, show me one episode where they actually couldn't come up with the rent. We'll talk about it next week, Darnell. Go ahead. <laughs> but it was only $26, it though. Was, so why they, can't you... If, if, if JJ was I, working it, at the it, chicken shack... It was shack, whole episodes where it took them... They was... Yeah. They had to have a rent party to keep the you lights... So stupid. Come on. I, anyway. I should have bought up. Go ahead. Anyway. What you looking for? Layla Rashad. Um, yeah, Nicole Murphy 
and uh, Layla Rashad's husband were caught kissing on camera in Italy. So um, uh, uh, Nicole Murphy came and said, she said, well, no, we were just, that's how we greet each other. It was just a greet. But if you could have saw this picture, I ain't never greeted nobody like that. And he's in a towel. Mm. He's in just a towel wrapped around his waist, and she's in a bathing suit. But it looked like, you know, we just got finished smashing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what it looked like, and I'm telling you goodbye or whatever. For real. Yeah, they got cough in their hand. They like they just got finished fucking. So what? So you what? Know, so and I'm so, about to go back to my room for somebody see me. So how do Layla Rashad feel? Sunshine. She didn't. She didn't come. I, I don't. I didn't feel see her respond yet. She, she looked totally motherfucking different. But like you know, some people are calling Nicole Murphy. They say she's messy though. They say they say she get well, off into that. Well, you Nicole, know I met Nicole Murphy in a liquor store here in Detroit. Yeah, I yeah. think somebody else told me that she kind of be uh, out here like that. I met her in the liquor store here. She fine in a month. Uh, also, though. other news, I don't know why, but we got Lamar Odom's dumb ass wants to rebuild his relationship with the Kardashians. Yeah, cause <laughs> of course he do. He's like, try, he uh, trying to get back out here. Now he clear. He ain't even know... He ain't even know it's been nine years. Right. <laughs> Here's the bigger news. He's been for nine <laughs> years. Here's the bigger news. So did anybody see, uh, was that true, that Safari was here and had guns and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh, but, 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 Southfield? Yeah, but T.I. did the same thing when they came to that uh, bar we used to do comedy at over there on Joy Road. and uh, That's that's Joy Road. Joy, uh, okay. But that's South, Joy Road. But, but South, what is Southfield these days? Like, I, didn't, I didn't know Southfield was something special. Still. Uh, well, it's Oakland County, so you still got a police presence that's gonna come pretty quicker than than Detroit. Uh, yeah. So this is it. at the end of the day, everybody be like, shit do happen in Southfield. The but city, the Southfield police, yeah, yeah, because it's showing up real quick. They they might show um, up quick, but they ain't gonna stop them from getting down on your ass they before stop, they show up. Right. It just you know what I'm like, saying. But most people know more characteristic than not, and it just looked like he just looked retarded. Like it, it looks stupid. It was too like huge. It's broad daylight. It's a bunch of women. It's key. It's you know what I'm saying. It wasn't what was even the event. Time. I don't even know what the event was. It was a it pool party. It wasn't oh kids. my god! So okay, so you had it, it a was, pool it, party. Yeah, it was a it was a pool party. So it just it kind of looked like. And, and then and then the dude holding the gun ain't even look sweet. He looked didn't. dirty. He just, it was long. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. Somebody was like, we do the short ones in the Dracos. He is all long. He out here with a, a six shooter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He do look dirty. Oh, shirt Tim wasn't even collar. Stan said uh, T Grizzly on his head. Oh, Grizzly on his head. Oh, okay. Oh, well, T Grizzly uh, uh, on his uh, head. Uh, uh, well, then that oh, would make uh, that would right. make sense. I mean, but that him. didn't, you know, I mean, you and, could, he you ain't, and he and he ain't scared to show y'all he got the security. You know what I'm saying? You he could you could you could have had security, but they didn't have to walk around like we over in. Third yeah, he could have walked them. He could have walked them back, and then you know not even saying? knowing this Detroit security could have been a grizzly cousin and right. still shot you <laughs> on the way to. But the I can not say though, Safari has been the most robbed, most getting he hit. He get rapper. robbed, beat up, right. jumped. Right. Then you gotta do something about that, man. He reminded me of this you guy. Gotta, you gotta uh, do something about that. This guy, Pretty Ricky, my friend, was dating. Every time he came over, he got beat up. Like he went to the gas station and got beat <laughs> up and robbed. Like we like. You was gone three minutes, yeah, you know. Every time, someone's always happening to Pretty Wiki. You can't be no, you yeah. can't be no rapper. You can't be in that industry. The city kiddies. <laughs> you can't be in that industry and you getting your like, like I remember this was years ago. I met Slim Thug. I mean, my and um, like Slim Thug was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like Ti was like people you meet, like they was cool, and he didn't have no security. They didn't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like. They just like I seen uh well he don't really need no security but, I, but, I met but you, BG BG didn't need no security but you <laughs> no I seen BG in Northland with his baby mama Man, like I seen a regular BG at nigga. Rutherford on Rutherford hey <laughs> hey but then you forget though how Safari came in the game. As Nicki Minaj's boyfriend, dog. Yeah, you can't come in as a. Uh, and, I mean, I, I mean, he ain't, he ain't came in trying to be tough. He came in as as a boyfriend. And you're sub, you are. I, I, I'm I'm with better safe than sorry because I saw right. I saw um Trey songs at the club and um he came down and a dude jumped on him tried to snatch his chain. I think he snatched his chain back. They end up getting it, but if, you know what I'm saying. You ne- it's better safe than sorry. You, I would, you, I don't believe you should be walking around in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. unprotected. And I do got two funny stories for us before we wrap up because we only got two a uh, couple minutes. First is uh, Young Dro arrested for attacking his girlfriend with banana pudding. Sometimes you gotta smile. Young Dro, um, so you know I'm cleaning this bitch. bitch. So I guess now it was I'm like shoulder lean in it, it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was shoulder my song. lean, like let me see your shoulder lean. See shoulder lean with that. Uh, and then also, this is just for the stupidest, uh, stupid criminal. There was a gentleman um, locally who was on a date with a young lady. 
robbed the young lady, took her car, took her car, carjacked her, took her car, and went on another date. And picked another oh, that date. That was up. a while ago. Yeah, and I just seen on it in the stolen car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What? So that is how that that's the foolish news we gonna leave on. For yeah. the day. Hey, I want to see what the second chick looked like. She had to. She be had tall. to be bad. Like you mean to tell me? He had to. Risk I would it be all. so mad. You gonna steal my car? Not only did you leave me to go on a date with another bar, but you stole money, my car, and my money. To go, which means you really didn't even want to kick it with me. Stan said that was Darnell. Shut up. <laughs> 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 no, it's not. He needed it to try to get her over. Right, he needed to try to get her over. They got her over. So he bust her over the head car. so that he can have this stuff. So I just wanted to leave y'all on that because I thought that was super hilarious. And you know what? I got one more thing before. Because we got three minutes. We got three minutes. Um, I want to just uh, send a rest in peace to the young man, 24-year-old. Yes. That Tyler lost Bennett. his life. He was in a car accident at Livinois in Davidson. And the gentleman um, that he was in an accident um, with beat him to death. What's his last name? Bennett. It's Tyler. I know his first. I name was is trying Tyler. to look his name up. I don't I know. His first know. name is Tyler. Um, but, but rest in peace and prayers to. Damn. Yeah. When was this? Maybe uh, like two Monday. Days ago. Monday yeah, morning. Happy Monday morning. Twenty-four year old young man. Um, so rest in peace to his family. Prayers to his family. I did see that he has a GoFundMe set up. Wow. So if anybody would like to donate, um, please uh do so. And then I also um, you know, just want to. Thank y'all for listening today. Fago, could you let us know where you're going to be at? Yeah, next? this weekend. <clears throat> this weekend, I'm going to be hosting uh, Saturday. I'm going to be hosting uh, the Punchline. Um, Corey, Corey Holcomb's going to be there. So, 5150 Nation, if y'all listening, man, come on out. Uh, it's going to be three shows. It's going to be crazy. 730, 1030, and 12 o'clock. So, it's going to be off the hook. And where can Real they follow crazy. you at? You can follow me on uh, Instagram at 7 Mile Fago with a 7. Um, <clears throat> And on Facebook, uh, Dewan Hampton. But I got 5,000. I shouldn't have told y'all my name. Y'all going to Google me, pull all up to the house and shit. I might put them up on your <laughs> shut up. Uh, Ronnie Chanel, where you going to be at next, boo? Uh, let's see, let's see. I know this weekend I am doing the Mitchell's family reunion. I'll Mitchell's? be doing that. Okay. Shout That's out to my cousin. A whole lot of Trent macaroni Mitchell. and cheese at that. Like good macaroni. Um, and also I will be at, um, I got so much stuff going on. I got a thousand things. But I will be at the... Pittsburgh Improv in September uh, for the whole weekend with my homeboy T. Row. All right, um, good job. Yeah. Okay, and when can they follow you at real quick on your social media? Uh, Ronnie Chanel, R O N I S H A N E L L on IG. Um, right now, you can follow me on Facebook at Sharon here. So I'm changing that shit back. Okay, and you can follow me on Instagram <laughs> at Melanie M E L A N I E J underscore comedy. Um, and again, you can find me on Facebook under Melanie Hearn. And you can catch the City Kitty podcast replay on my Facebook Live page and also on any platform where music and media is. Everywhere shared. fine podcasts. Everywhere so, yeah. fine podcasts are so. So listen, tune in next week. We will be City Kittying it up. And you never know who our next special guest will be. Thank wow. you, Stan, Darnell, Shiny D, everybody, Bob, Feather, for listening. Wow. All y'all, Peace everybody out. listen. Peace out. God bless. Real. The elegant. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> Cigarettes. <laughs> Whiskey.